Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Helene here, Cabin Fever Crochet, and another episode on this very cold and snowy day here in northeastern Washington State. As you can see, we are just now getting our winter. My husband had to plow me out yesterday so I could get to physical therapy. <laughs> And I'm going to slide out of you so you can see all these lovely icicles hanging off the roof. And the snow has finally uh, slowed down a little bit, but I can see it's blurry light, but it's heavy and wet. And we have, which is not good, on this little roof overhang. Out, it's just right outside the sliding glass doors from where I have been filming, um, covering the deck out back and uh, I'm guessing there's a good 18 inches or more piled up on there so hopefully we have metal roofs so hopefully it's gonna slide off pretty soon here um, so anyway I wanted to take a break from what I was doing and entertain myself a little bit and hopefully I will entertain you too and we had quite a group of deer back there earlier. And poor one little guy, at first we thought he was injured, but then we realized he was in that position for so long because he appeared to be constipated, the poor thing. He tried and tried and tried. And maybe there's just, uh, with uh, the lack of foliage out there, not enough greenery to do what it needs to do and get that roughage he needs. But he finally had success and moved on down the animal trail. Uh, with with his friends and family, so we were glad to see that. So I'm upstairs. Yes, I'm getting up and down the stairs a little bit more. One room loft up here, and and behind me in the corner, you see that kind of black hole, and that's that's what leads down. Just has a open like a balcony with a railing, and then very narrow and steep stairs with one railing going down. But I really enjoy being up here in the trees, and it's a very nice space another big window right there and the lighting's not so great right now so I'm gonna work with it and do the best I can so so bear with me but the things I want to show you are pretty true to color um, I just want to get change it out and have a little bit different scenery and for you too so have you heard of Willow Yarns well if you've heard of Hirschner's their division they're, they're not a company unto themselves, but it's a division, I believe, of Hirschner's because when I went on their website, all the information, their, their uh, policies, the shipping rates, the address from where it comes is all the same. And I have seen some Willow Yarns on in Hirschner's catalogs and on their website. It's kind of nice now. They have put it into their own category and they're getting more and more and they have a range for some bat, bat basics up to more higher end yarns and in this catalog they even have a few other brands they have a lot of tools and other catalogs and magazines so it's nice that if you're looking for other things that you can get a variety in one place to kind of consolidate and shape, save on your shipping and in my opinion, Hirschner's regular shipping rates are pretty outrageous, but um, they do have periodic specials and sales now and then, deals on their shipping with minimums, which is good. And, and I have yarn, as I've mentioned, that I really want to start working through my stash, and I've been doing that. And when I get, I do have four different ones I want to show you, but when I get to that point, uh, of going through a little more. There are some others in here that I really would like to try. And they have a real range of fibers and weights and some of their yarns, for example, uh, their Willow Wash, they have, and there are others in here as well, they have, look at this amazing range of colors. Now Hirschner's has their worsted soft I don't know how similar this yarn is. This particular one is 100% acrylic, and it comes in number three, four, and six weight. $3.99 a ball, 100% anti-pull acrylic. And as with the others that have multiple weights in the color ranges that they do, um, not every weight has every single color, but, but they have little markings and asterisk, uh, or what have you that corresponds with 
which color and which weight that they do have. And so I'm going to, I'm not going to go through page by page, but I want to give you a little overview. Oh, first I would just like to say from my heart to yours and um, the bracelet I'm wearing today. I've had this for decades, but I thought was very kind of apropos with my mood and the season and what I had on. It's all hearts, all hearts. I just, it's very, very comfortable. Almost can this, uh, the loops give a little bit of a lacy effect. So I decided to put that on today. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Now we are snowed in. Um, so, and there's supposed to be more coming, but tis the season and it's late, but that's, that's okay. It wouldn't be, you know, Eastern Washington without it. And the more moisture we get now, the further off that puts fire season, more hydration and, and so forth. Um, so this first yarn that I'm going to show you is the Willow Rise yarn. And I don't know if you have seen that, it, or you, you've probably experienced this. If you shop different places, it, it could happen, whether it's um, online, in a specialty store, in a big box store. There, I've seen many times where the exact same yarn, but a different label, it comes from the same place. Here's an example. Everything is the same. The yardage, the material. Um, this is Soho Gradient Yarn, which I believe the Soho is an in-house brand of Hirschner's. It does say distributed by Hirschner's. This particular one is, a, to me, the exact same as the Willow Rise. And if you look at this bottom purpley blue in the Rhapsody color. And it is uh, 58 cotton, 42 acrylic. It's five ounces, 475 yards, 5.99 a ball. Recommends an H hook. And I really enjoyed working with this. And I haven't used it in this color yet, but I have something that I'm going to show you I did in the green, in this particular green and, and blue. You can tell in the center, it's hard to see, but it does gradient to uh, blue in there. And it was, it's very soft. It's easy to work with. It does not frog easily. And I read, read one review where a person said it did, but I personally did not have that experience. You can see there is a bit of a halo to it. Not bad. Seems to wear pretty well. Um, although I haven't worn the piece a lot, but it really don't get to about, about the same amount of a halo on the actual garment. Um, and you get quite a bit of yardage in this. So in the blue and green color, I made this shawl and, um, and I think this was on Ravelry. I first saw it on Debbie Canadi Canadian Crotcheter on her channel, the Fernanda shawl. And this is the designer and I will do a little search. Hopefully I can find the link. And if I can, I will list that below. Easy, user-friendly, fun, worked up nicely. I really enjoyed it a lot, but I could kind of tell by looking at this pattern and it's exactly what happened. Um, now for, you know, Debbie and her her shape and her stature, it's, it's hard to tell on camera because it can distort or add weight or change a little bit to how someone actually is on person in person but she has mentioned that she's she's pretty small in here and that she said she wears a medium and and um, I'm sure I'm taller and I have broad shoulders I'm very long-waisted and uh, I'm a bigger size than she is and I, I could just almost tell by looking at it but that the time that I get it to wrap around my shoulders and the length that I want, it's just going to be too long and it's probably still going to be a little bit narrow. And I do like most of my shawls a little bigger and oversized and this one really is. Um, but for a summer, summer one, if I were, were going to make it up for that, I probably wouldn't want it this long. It's almost past my rear. But what I did and what I would do if I made it again. Now this is an asymmetrical design, so it's worked from the tip and it and it grows. Well, excuse me, it grows 
This one doesn't work from the tip. It just grows on one side and, and, and um, it doesn't go back, work back and forth. And that's how you get the pattern at a slant. But what I did was when I, this is of course the trim that is on, on both sections. But what I did is when I got to this point, so two sections before the end, is instead of continuing to work growing in this direction, I guess it does, it grows, grows in this direction. I connected at the top and I added just to the one side to widen it up a little and have it be a little bit more even and balanced on both sides. And I think if I were to do that again, I would start at, at least one, if not two sections sooner. I didn't want it to be that noticeable. Um, I would start one section just so it's not quite so long, but it's a big one. It's a big one, but I enjoyed the pattern. I, I would work it up again. I think it's very pretty, and I really like this yarn. The only thing is that the yarn has a bit of a smell to it. It's almost dissipated pretty much gone in this one and it's not a bad smell at all. It's very light. It's almost uh, could be the dye or maybe if the yarn was washed before working with it somehow. It has like a soft, excuse me, soapy kind of scent. Not the kind of like <clears throat> take your breath away going down the you know detergent aisle in the grocery store or anything. It's it's just barely there. Didn't bother me whatsoever with allergies and that type of thing. Um, but each page does have many, many patterns. And again, you know, some are, are paid for, and there are quite a few free patterns in here. Knit, crochet, there's even um, a small macrame section in the back. The, and the next one up that I have um, is the farmhouse cotton. And just these lovely, pleasing to me, very calming colors I like quite a bit. Um, and there's some patterns in here that I might be interested in, but I did not have a good experience with Hirschner's patterns and the lack of, of customer service available to me. I purchased one early fall. Uh, or might have been the end of the summer actually and it was for an oval table runner and it was probably 16 17 rows and after row four you're on your own and I paid for this pattern and uh, should have been able to figure it out really because it's it's a basic way of increasing but it, it says to just continue increasing on each end until it lays flat what 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 does that mean you know, even a free pattern, that would be frustrating, but to have it incomplete, um, and I, I went with the standard. You know, sometimes when you do, uh, say, an oval, pretend this is an oval, all right? So sometimes you do a couple increases here and, a, and two there, put two stitches in, two stitches in, or, you know, to you have to be able to make that curve. And... I tried it the normal way and I, I just went in the same way it was written up to number four and continued on with that sequence as, as it grew. Didn't work out. Yeah, I did the, the ratio of um, where you might say just as an example. Four double crochets, one increase. Next row you do five double crochets to one increase and so on. That didn't work out. So I emailed, waited a week, week and a half, did not get a response. So I call customer service. Seems to me customer service, they're serving the customer, anything that comes up, issues, questions, so forth, that would be the place. Apparently not, or um, the woman I spoke with did not think so. So then she sent me on to another department that handles patterns. Got her voicemail, left a detailed message, did not hear back at all. So that was three attempts and over a couple week period of time um, trying to, to seek some kind of resolution. I, I think a refund would have been in order, but I got nothing. Uh, so I'm not real happy about that. And um, so I'm a little, it, it's a deterrent to me 
a little hesitant on buying any more. I might try a couple more of their free patterns and see how they work up. And I'll let you know. And yeah, stay tuned in my next video because I did do one. And um, I'll show you that. But here, here's a, this is cute with crochet. It's a free pattern. And this could be good for... I bought some of these meadow, willow meadow yarns and all these lovely colors. I got three and I didn't, I had, I bought these for a specific purpose and didn't write down what and I have no idea what I was thinking before. And I kind of just wanted to try some um, other brand, different cotton yarns. I, I typically go with the Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton, but I like to see what else is out there because it's not always easy to find 100% or a come on light hundred percent or a blend that is is soft real soft so I got I got these three um, this one really doesn't look anything like the photo and they do their best it's that's this wind storm that's much darker than it really is in person this one nest right there is showing pretty true to color this one is not at all. This is called Dark Cherry, which I think is pretty pretty well named. It's darker here than it is in person, but it's not so rusty brick red. It's just, it's, it has more depth than it has that like, purpley plum eggplanty undertone to it. Uh, this is soft. It's, it seems a little tighter wound than others. It, you might get a little bit of that string-like feel, but it's not going to be, I don't think, that real rough or rougher, textured, splitting, harder on your hands like the worsted home cotton kind of yarns. Um, this feels like it should be fairly easy to work with. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I thought these three work together well. And... And sometimes, you know, opposites really can complement each other, and especially the, the world of color. I'm not sure which order I will put them in. But I can use them for um, something where there's color blocking changes, you know, such as pillows, whatever they are. There are 50 gram balls, 105 yards, and they sell for $2.99 each. I tell you, this magazine, this uh, catalog's getting a workout. And here is um, the last in the ones that I have, the Willow Coastal Cotton. This, but mine, keep in mind, I purchased on Premier's website. And theirs is labeled Universal Yarn Brooklyn. But, I mean, is this not exactly the same? 100% combed cotton. And yes, three ounce skeins. Um, 85 grams, 149 yards. But Premier this summer had yeah, just like a super blowout clearance sale. So I don't know if this is something discontinued or just they are discontinuing from their website or if they even have any more left or on sale. And they only had, I can't even see that now, only had a, a couple of um, colorways left. This one and this called Reflecting Pool. I don't recall what the name is um, on Premier's site. I really like this one, the Red Rock Canyon in the coral and the beige and the cream. But it's very nice comb cotton. Just think of your nicest, softest t-shirt that gets better with wear and just feels really, really nice against the skin. That's what this reminds me of. It is extremely soft. And um, so I have enough of this that I purchased and all oh, I got it for less than half price um, and when Premier had their minimum $25 free ship which was awesome um, so I might make like a lightweight open weave summer sweater if I have enough or or short sleeve little shell sweater to go over a sleeveless dress or cardigan or something I tend I wear a lot of um, like skirts and dresses in the summer some some summers it can get pretty cooking up here so um so yeah if this is my summer uniform <laughs> just stay cool and comfortable dress makes it easy easy thing to throw over my swimsuit <laughs> to 
too. And here's another another pattern I thought was very attractive. We'll leave pretty back to that. Now there's there is a real range in here. Um, we have oh 70, there's 70 acrylic, 30 wool, the willow wheels. And I have not tried their verbena yarn next to that. It looks very lovely. That's 75 superwash, 25 nylon. Um, this looks interesting. It's 70 superwash, 30% rayon from bamboo, which I believe will give it a really, really nice hand. The bamboo is going to make it a little bit cooler. It's going to be silky, nice straight, glide to the touch or glide on your hook. It is a number three weight. 284 yards per three and a half ounce skein. And here's a free pattern for you, for you knitters out there. And this is, um, I think, intermediate advanced, probably because of the cabling that's in there. So you can um, go on to, if you want a catalog, you can go on to willowyarns.com or call their 800 number, which is 855-279-4699 and request a catalog. Just covering up my personal information there. So there you have it. Okay. And I'll just go over, oh, the center section. I wanted to show you. Oh, we have some. This is interesting, too. It's a... 89% rayon from bamboo and 11 nylon in a bulky weight, I think. Uh, it seems a little more unusual to find. And here are more, some more rustic yarns, if you like those. There we go. Now, every page, to me, it's, it's just something attractive to look at. Oh, here's a fun one. Look at these cute hats. Those cute knitted hats and these these Mary Jane style slippers, spring forward slipper, or for those of you who live in a um, more warmer year-round climate, just a little something to put on your, your tootsies. And uh, super wash wool. Oh, I like these also. Heart hats. And that bag looks easy, easy to make. I've actually worked this granny pattern before um a new a n n o o crochet on youtube she did a poncho in this pattern is how i recognize it i made it um i couldn't quite gauge how to really size it to fit me i made it too big came out about three sizes too big so I wish I'd thought of that before I took one panel apart and, and remade it into something else, but it could have made two really nice oversized pillows because I had four panels, so, you know, one for each side, front and back. Um, but I'll do something else with it. To me, this looks, looks pretty easy, and that would be easy to line as well. And, um, oh yeah, each, here's a, here you go. Here's a free crochet pattern and this is looks it's um, maybe more advanced it's called I don't know what is it called a uh, cow sublime cow probably because of the oh it has faux cables faux cables and bow like stitches it's a free online pattern so the only thing you'd be risking there is your time and maybe your yarn, depending on the type of yarn, how easily it frogs if it doesn't work out. Uh, this quiver yarn, which is 63 wool, oh, 25 rayon from bamboo, and 12 acrylic. Just the texture of it, the, the um, percentage and makeup of the fibers are not this exactly the same, but uh, like that Chloe yarn I got from Hobby Lobby. Maybe just because the type of balls that it is and how it's spun, but but looking at the and the colors are not the same whatsoever. But just looking at the well, there there is one that's similar to these two, and kind of to this one. But 
it is 70% wool and might be 30% viscose. I think that's what it is. Don't hold me to it, but that is a plant fiber. So it's you know, kind of similar, number four weight. But just looking at it from the picture and when I get real close up, it seems kind of similar to that um, yarn, especially this red raspberry one. But oh, that's, that's pretty, pretty yarn. I thought it was drapey front. All right. Um, so now I'm getting to the center of the book where we have lots of more patterns, books, tools, and you can even purchase a grab bag which uh, treats yourself to a mystery grab bag of yarn filled randomly in our warehouse. Each bag holds a different combination of your favorite yarns and the ranges from sock, wool, bulky, and cotton yarn. So four different options and the prices are $14.99 so in the roundup. So $15 to $20. But it doesn't give you an idea how much you get, how many skeins, um, the weight, the pound total, or what size this bag is. Is that a grocery shopping bag filled or a lunch size bag? <laughs> um, so I typically, even though I did get those uh, Secret Santa bags um, this one time, I typically like to, to know what I get, I'm getting, but you know, I might take a chance sometime just to see. Perhaps on the cotton yarns, as long as it's not a bag full of home cotton, and that, that is the chance you take. Uh, but I do have a similar yarn swift. This is an Amish style, Amish table swift. Mine I got from joanne.com with the coupon and great shipping deals that day. I love it though. I love the simplicity of it. It sets up easily. It breaks down lays flat into a box so maybe four inches wide by an, an inch or so thick, not very tall, it just slides underneath something. It's it's very simple. You you have this this base and two bars with a dowel that goes up through and then holes in each side of the bars. And I don't know if this one does or not, but mine has measurements and numbers marked. And that is so how you set up your um, hank of yarn around the dowels and the adjustability in the holes and the measurements depending on the size and type of hank that you have. And I've adjusted them to where I might have these two on the one um, bar set at one position and the other two either one forward or one back depending on if it's the size hanker yarn that's kind of in between the two so there's some flexibility there and mine is really well made the wood nice it's smooth love it um, so there are, there are a lot of interesting little things in here and I, I like tools I like tools and I like gadgets I don't buy them all and I prefer something has a multi-function purpose but it doesn't always have to because sometimes I tell you you know having just that one thing that does the job uh, it just makes life so much easier and better um, although I do like them I, I am you know gadgets and tools and uh, I like going to Home Depot and just browsing around the tool section it's the ingenuity of people, how they come up with things, you know, and, and it is said after all that um, the necessity is the mother of invention, and that's how people come up with things when there is a need. And I actually might order these. I've been looking for them. Um, copper infused compression gloves because I've been having some more trouble with my fingers lately and you know this this thumb is is crooked now and um, in the joint there's sensitivity and pain sometimes I can tell I get inflammation so um, I give my hands breaks and I have have some oh I have a um, CBD hemp salve which I love and I, I it helps with little rashes and different things and also um, 
I just like the way it feels and also it, it helps with my hands as well. I, I buy that locally here. There's no THC in it. Um, so it's it can be shipped anywhere in the United States really. But there's a local shop um, and I purchased that. A little bit goes a long way. I've been putting it on my hip area and I mix. I have an essential oil blend that I made up myself and I mix the two. I've been putting it on my scar area. Um, but anyway, that helps. But, and I still, I do stretch and make sure I get this, this long muscle on the top of my forearm on the, the inside. Make sure I stretch my hands, necks, neck and shoulders. But it has been bothering more me more lately and I haven't been able to find them locally I and mean, I haven't done like an extensive search or anything but these are good price $12.99 on sale I don't know if they still are they come in two sizes just women's and men's and there it's a poly cotton spandex blend I don't know what percentage cotton and it would certainly help make it more breathable and I'd hope that they're comfortable and not all like get sweaty and gross and uh, particularly in summer but I think that's something that that I could certainly use but all, all kinds of different catalogs you know and magazines and you know, just about anything you can think of really and even tools too for uh, and, and good quality ones for both for crochet and and knitting and here's something clever have you ever seen these you know it's the the yarn version for a toilet paper roll holder and I think if if you're really into using thread or anything that has a you can run a spool spindle through it this would be great keep your your yarn attached and you can just work right off it no you know, keep rolling. And this would probably work for yarn cake too, if you worked from the outside, because obviously your, your uh, spindle is going to go through the center of it, so you couldn't work from the center pole. But here is another vertical version, a similar idea. It's pretty with the inlaid wool. I've been trying to think of some ideas coming up with something to, to do um, shawl pins. Because I love the idea of them, but I don't like them so pointy. I'm always afraid of stabbing myself. And if you accidentally run into something and that's just at the right angle, and particularly the metal ones, you could really impale yourself. And that could be dangerous or even deadly, uh, like if that broke off inside of you. That would be too fun. There's another free scarf pattern. And now we're getting, does that look like a heart? Ah just made for the my theme um, so now this is Sidar Sardar yarn I don't really quite know what commands these prices 19 and 17 dollars a cake for primarily acrylic 80 acrylic 20 wool 78 19 and then uh, three percent poly okay you are getting five and a quarter ounces each 568 yards which is fair amount for number three weight, maybe it is the, the brand name or perhaps, again, where it's sourced or the type of dyeing process they use. I don't really know. That seems a little on the higher end side as far as prices go for the type of fiber and what you get. Um, and here are a couple patterns that are, are free downloads. <laughs> And uh, the Universal Yarns Revolutions Number Five Weight Cake for nineteen a yarn, a yard um, nineteen a cake per, and fifty-seven percent acrylic, fifteen polyamide, ten alpaca and wool, and eight percent mohair. As you can see, it's kind of that that real fuzzy um, appearance to it. Okay, so I'll just. Can I do you know we've got oh King Cole more Sardar summer linen it's a cotton linen blend oh no no it isn't I was looking at another one I take that back I saw one in here yeah it's the one below this is made in um, France the one below I really have an idea of how it's pronounced but I'm not gonna attempt that right now but this is 55 
organic cotton, nice, really nice, and 36% linen, 9% viscose, 426 yards uh, for three and a half ounce skein. It's a number two weight. And um, for organic cotton, I, I think that the 999 organic cotton and linen, well, I think that's a fair price actually for what you get. And for the amount of yardage, that would make a really nice fine gauge piece, I do believe. And um, the summer linen, now that's that's a stretch. It's 10% linen, 90% lycocell, 10 cell. Um, I think it's all the same. 10 cell is a, a brand name for cellulose uh, plant fiber pulp. And just depending on where that pulp is from, it could be rayon, it could be other other plants, trees. It's it just varies. It's kind of a generic. The lycocell is kind of a generic name for that. Uh, for example, you know you have gen your generic drugs, which is actually the name is derived from the the product itself. And then you have the same, which is under a brand name that you see advertised all over the place. If if that makes sense. So it's similar with the lycocell versus um, what is derived, you know, the, the name that they made when this pulp is made versus the brand name, which is oftentimes the original creator of it, and then they register and trademark that. And then, uh, anyway, not to get too too technical, but I hope that makes some, some kind of sense. And it's interesting, linen is made from flax, and I can eat flax, and I do every day. But I can't wear linen. It, it prickles and it itches and it bugs my skin. And maybe something with only 10% linen might not be an issue for me. But I will say that this um, 5536 uh, organic cotton linen would, with this higher linen content, would make an awesome market bag. Like that bag that I made and showed in my last video would be great for that. So here's a cotton silk blend, 77 cotton, 23 silk King Cole finesse. Um, it's only 50 gram ball for $5.99, but you know, considering the content and what you're going to make out of that. So there's really quite a variety here. Oh, you know, when I was reviewing the um, crochet magazine and mentioned the Universal Yarn Bamboo Pop, that was one of the yarns that was used here. Here it happens to be. So if you haven't seen it before, here you go. And this is a child size garment. I think this is so cute. It's nice. They have a variety of colorways in the speckles, and then you can work them back to the solid if you want to pipe the color in and, you know, ground it and block it and um, mix them together like that. And these are, I thought they were smaller balls, but they're not. They're three and a half ounces. It's a, um, a number three weight. 50 cotton, 50 bamboo. Uh, that will be a really, really nice blend, I think. It suggests a G-hook, um, size 4 knitting needles, and, and you know that's that's all kind of subjective, but that's a free pattern, and it goes from 3 to 6 months up to 6 to 8 years, and it is a free download as well. And another Barocco, Mykonos. Isn't that an island in Greece, I believe? Hope I pronounced that correctly. And these are stonewash. Oh, this would make a great market bag, if you don't mind the price. Although it is a number three weight, but neat. It's 66% um, linen, 28 viscose, and 6% cotton. And, oh, wow, $10.99 for a 50 gram ball, 137 yards. Know, for one of those specialty items. Sublime Eden. Have you heard of Sublime yarn before? I have not. It's kind of interesting as well. And then we go into some of the more, more stuff for the young ones, babies, children, toddlers. I mean, they're all children. Humans. <laughs> or the little one humans. And you could use that yarn for any project. I just probably think the colors and maybe the um, the weights 
although this is a number four weight and yeah I don't know I marked that page oh maybe because I want to show you that really sweet sweet heart blanket another free pattern bibs um, Okay, so I just think that's pretty much it. I mentioned, oh yeah, here's the um, the pattern for macrame, and and this is tape, or they're calling it ribbon yarn, and number six, super bulky. I, I would say this is because it's 60 cotton, 40 poly, probably similar to Line Brand had their fast track yarn. And there's another brand from the UK, Love. Crochet Love Knitting has it. It's by the brand Hooked. It has three O's, H-O-O-O-K-E-D. And I do have some of that I want to make a rug for. And that is mostly cotton, but really having a little poly may not be so bad for um, something that you're going to walk on or, or use that way because if it gets stained any stains on it or dirt that the synthetic is going to release those stains a lot easier where cotton is going to absorb that it is if you know you wear cotton t-shirts and you spill something on it you know exactly what I'm saying so that's pretty much it as far as as these yarns go um, and I just want to show you a little something that I've been working on and making and if you're still here <laughs> hang in there with me I would love to know your opinion and what you think. I've made been making some um, little stitch markers and the ones I've made so far they all have little Swarovski crystals but I do have natural stones. I thought maybe a little amethyst or rose quartz or or something uh, might be nice to switch it up to and I wanted these lightweight so they're not going to pull on the stitches. I wanted the hook large enough to where it's... <laughs> I didn't get a good demo there, did I? Where it's easy to work because some people have, um, you know, fine motor coordination, like dexterity difficulties, and um, some, some of you have nails, some don't. And But I didn't want it too big to where it's going to slip underneath get hooked up because they are working with metal and get hooked up in the stitches either and also the type of lobster claw that I chose is um, one that the hinge will go as far back against the back of the neck of the hook as possible so, because I've seen some, they go part way. Well, that's just something for the yarn to get caught up in. And then the yarn goes, ah, pff, done. You know what I'm saying? And all the stitch markers that I, I have are the, the plastic uh, baby diaper type of pins. I thought, well, I just kind of, I've seen these and I think they're fun and they're pretty and a little something extra special to look at. So I have the heart. I have the little butterfly. This is in a purple color with the aurora, aurora. Oh, boy, aurora borealis. If I could just say my words. I'm getting hungry. Oh, the sun's going down again. Oh, the sun. The light is changing. What sun? Um, you can see the reflection. I, I worked with the most best I could with the lighting up here. I certainly wasn't going to drag my um, tall, the freestanding, the real floor, tall, the floor lamp light up here. It was enough getting myself and my stuff up here. Okay, so here is, um, what do you think of these little charms? Love, even though it's upside down. The sentiment's still the same, so that, that would hang this way. Love, you gotta have peace, peace and love, and granola. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, and I don't have the right size um, lobster claws for the silver tone ones, but I did make little butterfly in the blue, and I'll finish that up. So I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, doing some sets and putting them on my Etsy shop. 
I don't know. I'll have to see. I pulled the, the charms that I have that are the lightest weight, though. But I just want to let you know what you think of those. There's so many out there now. And um, I don't know how much more special these are or not. And, but everybody does their own thing. So it's just another one to add to the mix. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to call it an evening. I think the dogs are getting hungry. And um, get back to some of my other stuff. And... Yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Wow, two in one week. Imagine that. <laughs> Take care, everybody. I got lemon. Lemon LaCroix. Very thirsty today. I think it's this forced air heating really drying me out. All right. Take care of yourselves. Be safe out there. And I hope you will find something every day to do that you enjoy and uplifts your spirit and gives you something to smile about. Always the yarn, love. All right, till next time. Cheers.